Sam Miller's life hadn't always been dominated by frustration and disappointment. There was a time when things felt full of potential. Growing up in a rough part of Detroit, he had to make tough choices to stay afloat. His mom remarried a no-nonsense cop named Greg Thompson, who kept Sam from slipping into the darker side of life. Although Sam initially bristled at Greg's strict rules, he later realized Greg's influence was what pushed him toward academic success. From a rebellious kid, Sam transformed into a focused student, eventually discovering a love for history. His dedication to school opened doors, leading to a bright future. He soon met Linda Carr, an energetic law student, and they fell fast for each other. Moving in together, they started mapping out their future. Sam felt certain they were heading toward a happy marriage, but soon, the pressures of their budding careers began driving a wedge between them, creating an unspoken distance. On a cold, drizzly autumn afternoon, the gray skies seemed to mirror Sam's mood. He climbed out of his car and walked into Joe's tavern, looking for a break from the stress. A colleague's sudden retirement had left Sam scrambling to find a replacement, and after three failed interviews, his frustration was reaching new heights. His students were irritated by delayed course materials, but none of that weighed on him as much as the strain in his relationship with Linda. Hey there, professor. Long time no see, said Max, the bartender, with a nod. What can I get you? I'll take a whiskey with water. Sam replied, noticing it was barely 4 p.m. asterisk asterisk. As he waited, Sam's eyes drifted across the old, familiar bar, a place he'd been coming to since his grad school days. His mind wandered back to when he was wrapping up his doctorate in American history. He was about to publish his book on Andrew Jackson and had just secured a teaching gig at a small university. The pay wasn't much, but it was enough, and he couldn't have been happier. Linda had graduated from law school and was working at a well-known firm. They had been living together for a year, and he'd saved up to buy an engagement ring. When he proposed, Linda's happiness filled him with pride, and they had planned to marry the following spring. Sam's thoughts flashed to a younger version of Linda, lively and full of energy, her curly brown hair bouncing as she laughed. Standing at just five feet four inches, she always seemed taller because of her vibrant personality. But his mood darkened as he remembered the New Year's Eve party at her law firm, right after their engagement. Sam never really felt comfortable around her colleagues. They looked down on his career as a professor, and that always added tension between him and Linda. By 11 p.m. that night, the party had devolved into a booze-fueled mess. Sam didn't drink much, always cautious because of his past. His father had been killed in a drunk driving accident when Sam was young, leaving his mom to raise him alone scraping by. Sam swore he'd never let alcohol control his life like it had ruined his dad's. This resolve was why he felt so out of place that night, with nearly everyone, including Linda, drunk. Normally a light drinker, Linda was teasing Sam for being too serious, playfully accusing him of ruining the fun. She was tipsy, and when Sam tried to get her to leave, she snapped at him, insisting she wasn't ready to go. Reluctantly, Sam waited on the sidelines watching the chaos. As midnight approached, Sam searched for Linda and finally found her in a heated kiss with Mike Sanders, a junior lawyer at her firm. Their embrace wasn't innocent, and Sam's blood boiled. He stormed over and yanked her away. What the hell are you doing? He growled, his voice low but full of fury. Did you forget you're engaged? Mike made the mistake of shoving Sam, and without thinking, Sam knocked him to the floor. Linda, her face flushed with anger, slapped Sam hard, drawing the attention of the entire room. In the sudden silence, Sam pulled the engagement ring from her finger, tossed it to the floor, and crushed it under his heel before walking out, shaking with anger and humiliation. Asterisk, asterisk. As he reached his car, Sam forced himself to calm down, though his mind raced. He didn't care that Linda was drunk. There was no excuse for what she'd done. All he wanted was to get back to their apartment, pack his things, and leave. She'd crossed a line, and he had no intention of forgiving her. Back at their place, Sam threw his belongings into two suitcases and a duffel bag. Looking around the apartment they had shared, he felt a deep sadness at how quickly things had unraveled. He knew this wasn't just a small argument. This was the end. He doubted he'd ever be able to trust Linda again, whether with his heart or his pride. If she wanted to fool around, she could do it without him. 
Sam checked into a nearby motel that night, wanting to put some distance between himself and the mess. He knew there were rooms available for faculty at the university, and he planned to move into one the next day. He hadn't sorted out his feelings about Linda yet, but in his gut, he knew they were through. For the next few days, Sam buried himself in work, avoiding Linda's calls and deleting her messages. He wasn't ready to deal with the fallout, not while his anger was still raw. Sam missed Linda more than he cared to admit, wondering if he had overreacted to what could have been just a drunken mistake. But deep down, he didn't really believe that excuse. Two weeks after the party, Sam reluctantly agreed to meet with Greg Nelson, a senior partner at Linda's law firm, for lunch at the Rivercrest Country Club. Greg had called, insisting they talk, and Sam suspected why but chose to go with an open mind. As he walked into the sunlit dining room, he spotted Greg sitting by the large windows and made his way over. Sam, good to see you, Greg said warmly, extending his hand. Thanks, Mr. Nelson. Nice to see you too, Sam replied, though his tone lacked real enthusiasm. Please call me Greg. I've told you before. I'd like to think of us as friends, Greg said, his smile genuine. Sam nodded, forcing a small smile of his own. Of course, Greg. I have a lot of respect for you and I appreciate how kind you've been to me. They exchanged pleasantries and chatted lightly over lunch. Once the table was cleared and the coffee arrived, Greg's tone grew more serious. Sam, I'm sure you know why I asked you here today. Besides enjoying your company, I wanted to talk about Linda. Please, just give me a few minutes. Sam sighed and nodded. He had known this conversation was coming, and part of him even welcomed it. Maybe Greg could help fix the mess between him and Linda. Greg leaned in slightly. First, I want to apologize on behalf of the firm. That party got way out of hand, and it shouldn't have happened. We addressed it, and as for Mike Sanders, well, he's been transferred to another office. Turns out his plan to pursue Linda wasn't exactly a secret. He's gone now, and firing him would have caused a lot more trouble. Sam raised an eyebrow at that. A plan? So this wasn't just some one-off thing? His mind raced, wondering what else Linda might have been hiding. Greg, sensing Sam's concern, quickly clarified. I looked into it, Sam, and nothing happened beyond what you saw that night. Linda's a wreck right now, and I don't want to see this destroy a relationship that clearly still has love. It's time to talk and sort this out. Sam knew Greg was right. Yeah, I guess I'm ready to talk to her rationally. I'll call her and figure out something. Greg grinned, pleased with Sam's answer. No need. Linda's expecting you at the apartment tonight for dinner. Don't worry. I knew you'd come around. Sam let out a short laugh. All right, Greg, but not dinner. I'll stop by around eight, and we can talk over coffee. Thanks for giving me the push I needed. That evening, Sam arrived at the apartment and sat down with Linda for a long conversation. She was anxious, her hands trembling slightly, but Sam waited, patient. He knew if they were going to move forward, she'd have to be the one to start. This mess was on her, and it was her responsibility to take the first step in fixing it. Finally, with tears welling up in her eyes, Linda looked at Sam. I owe you an apology, Sam. I don't know why I kissed him. It was stupid, and I was drunk. I'm ashamed, and I hope you can forgive me. Sam sighed, his voice calm. I get it, but it doesn't take away how hurt I am. You chose someone else over me in front of everyone. It was humiliating. If this is what I have to look forward to, maybe we shouldn't be together. Linda's face paled, her voice shaky. No, Sam, please. I love you. Don't let one stupid mistake destroy what we have. Linda, Sam said softly, if we're going to be married, we need to agree on what respect and loyalty mean. Otherwise, we'll just keep hurting each other. By the end of the night, Linda had apologized again, swearing off alcohol in excess, while Sam apologized for how quickly his temper had flared, even though he didn't think his reaction was unreasonable. They talked seriously about trust, fidelity, and what they expected from each other. The next day, Sam moved back into the apartment, and slowly, life returned to normal. Oddly enough, Sam never bought another engagement ring, and Linda never brought it up. They got married in the spring as planned, and for a while, had a decent marriage. But life tested them again when they discovered Sam couldn't have children. They chose to accept it and focus on their relationship and careers. Sam blinked, 
realizing he had been lost in thought. Relieved that not much time had passed, he glanced at his empty glass and waved to Max for a refill. As he sipped, his thoughts turned to Greg Nelson, a man who had become more of a friend than Sam ever expected. He still felt a twinge of sadness over Greg's recent passing. Greg, along with Matt Perkins, a younger lawyer who joined the firm later, had been the only people at Linda's workplace Sam ever really connected with. Matt had always admired Sam's career as a professor, especially since Matt himself had once dreamed of teaching. Sam was glad Matt was still around, but his thoughts drifted back to Linda. Their 20th anniversary was approaching, but the growing tension in their marriage made it hard for Sam to look forward to it. Over the years, their relationship had quietly deteriorated. Affection had faded, and it seemed like every small disagreement now turned into a cold, bitter exchange. The intimacy they once shared had evaporated, replaced by an uncomfortable distance. Sam dreaded the idea of another argument. Linda's sharp words had become more frequent, and he wondered if things had really gotten so bad that they couldn't even talk anymore. A voice suddenly interrupted his thoughts. Hey there, Sam. Buy a girl a drink? He looked up, startled, and smiled as he recognized the voice. It was Kate, an old friend. I expected to see you. I stop by here every few weeks for old time's sake. Order me a gin and tonic, Sam. I'll be right back, Kate said, heading to the restroom with a quick smile. Sam chuckled as he watched her go. Dr. Kate Adler, an attractive woman in her late thirties, was more than just beautiful. Tall, confident, with dark hair and striking green eyes, she now held the position of assistant chair in the theater and performing arts department. Sam and Linda had supported Kate through two divorces and a string of broken relationships, and over the years, she had become Sam's closest friend. When Kate returned, she slid into the seat next to him and asked, All right, Sam, what's eating at you? I can tell something's up. Sam raised an eyebrow, trying to deflect. Why do you think there's a problem? And don't tell me you stop by here every few weeks. We both know that's not true. Kate laughed lightly. I saw your car outside so I decided to check if it was really you. She looked at him with concern. Sam trusted her completely, which made it easier for him to spill everything that had been weighing on him. He opened up about his frustrations and the confusion he felt about his marriage, with Kate listening intently, clearly saddened by his struggles. She hadn't realized how much Sam was hurting, and the extent of the disconnect between him and Linda surprised her. Sam, something deeper must have triggered all this. Kate said, breaking the silence. From what you're describing, it sounds like a bunch of small things that have built up, but there has to be more. Has anything big happened between you two? Sam shook his head slowly. Honestly, Kate, I can't point to any one thing. It feels like we just drifted apart, and I don't know how to fix it. Kate leaned in sympathetically. Have you tried talking to her? I mean, really talking? Just lay it all out there. Sam sighed. We've tried. But every conversation ends in a fight. She accuses me of being paranoid, and I lose my patience. It's like we're speaking different languages. Across town, Linda Miller leaned back in her office chair, her gaze settling on the tall, blonde man sitting across from her desk. She didn't hide her appraisal of Mike Sanders, who had been trying to charm his way into her life for months. Although she found him attractive, Linda knew he wasn't worth risking her marriage over, even if things at home were strained. Mike, she said coolly, you've been back for six months and you haven't changed. You're still the same relentless flirt. Why not settle down and stop chasing women around the office? Mike grinned, his confidence unshaken. Come on, Linda. I'm just being friendly. You're gorgeous and any guy would be lucky to have you. Your husband's too wrapped up in his books to notice how amazing you are. And you know I'm right. I can see it in your eyes. You want me. And it'll happen, Linda. You'll see. His words hit closer to home than Linda wanted to admit. The growing distance between her and Sam had become impossible to ignore. What used to be playful teasing had turned into sharp criticism, with Sam often mocking her work as a lawyer while she fired back, belittling his job as a professor. It stung more than it should have. Maybe she should have told Sam that Mike had been transferred back to the city, but the truth was, she was afraid of how he'd react. Not telling him felt like a small lie, but now, 
Linda wondered if it would come back to haunt her. Linda straightened up and looked back at Mike. Mike, let's not go there. My home life is off limits. Don't cross that line. Mike just gave a sly smile. All right, but remember, I'm always here. You've got a friend in me. A friend, Linda repeated with a grimace. Right, let's keep this professional, Mike. Now, let's focus on the Morris contract and wrap this up. But before she could react, Mike leaned over, his lips briefly brushing hers, and then he was gone, whistling as he walked out. Linda sat frozen for a moment, feeling a strange mix of anger and excitement. She touched her lips, her mind racing. Was this where all the flirting had been leading? She shook her head, trying to push the thought away. Her phone rang, breaking the tension in the room. It was her boss, Mark Hudson. Linda, are you finishing the Morris contract? He asked, his voice impatient. Yeah, Mark, we've been working on it for months. What's going on? Linda asked, already feeling her frustration build. There's a snag. You'll need to fly to Chicago on Monday to finalize it with the client in person. He can't make it here, and he wants it wrapped up by next week, Mark explained. Linda groaned, feeling the weight of another looming deadline. Mark, it's Friday, and we'll have to work the whole weekend to pull that off. I've only had Mike helping me, and we're running out of time. I know, I know, Mark sighed. I'll get you more help, but it's going to be a long weekend. Rest up tonight because it's going to be a grind starting tomorrow. Linda hung up the phone with a frustrated sigh, already dreading what this weekend would do to her relationship. Sam had been complaining about how much she worked, and this would be yet another point of conflict. She feared this might be the last straw, but she promised herself that once this project was done, they'd work on their marriage. Maybe even take that vacation they had been putting off for years. She knew she'd been irritable and distant with Sam lately, and vowed to make things right once this was all behind them. Mike Sanders was back, and his plan for revenge was simple, to make Linda his, no matter what it took. The autumn air had grown crisp, and Sam Miller was eager to get home after a long day. As he pulled into the driveway, he noticed the house was dark. Great, he muttered, assuming Linda was still stuck at the office. But just as he stepped out of the car, Linda's headlights flashed as she pulled up beside him. Surprised, he waited by the door. Hey, honey, Linda called out cheerfully. Looks like we got home at the same time. How about we freshen up and go out for dinner tonight? Sam raised an eyebrow. Linda's sudden burst of enthusiasm seemed a little too forced. Something's up, he thought, but decided to play along. He figured he'd see what she had in mind. To his surprise, they had a lovely evening together sharing a relaxed meal and light-hearted conversation, something that had been missing between them for months. For the first time in what felt like years, Sam really noticed Linda, her beauty, her warmth. Even after so many years of marriage, he realized he might have been taking her for granted. Too wrapped up in his work, he had let things slide. But tonight, something felt different. He resolved to make more of an effort to rebuild their connection. Linda, too, felt a flicker of hope. She saw the way Sam looked at her over dinner, and it stirred something in her, something long buried beneath the strain of work and routine. She vowed to push through the Simmons project as quickly as possible, so they could focus on each other again. She cuddled into Sam's arm as they drove home, feeling closer to him than she had in months. Back at the house, they shared a glass of wine by the fireplace, soft music playing in the background. The moment was almost perfect, but Linda knew she had to break the news to Sam about working over the weekend and the out-of-town trip on Monday. She bit her lip, unsure whether to wait until the last minute or get it over with now. Knowing that delaying it would only make things worse, she decided to face it head-on. Sam, I've got some good news, she began cautiously. The Simmons project is almost wrapped up, so I'll be done with these long hours soon. We can get back to normal. I do have to work tomorrow to finish the final draft, and I'll need to fly out on Monday to meet the client in Chicago to close the deal. Sam's face darkened, his mood shifting instantly. I don't want to hear any more, Linda. It's clear that your job comes before this marriage. I've heard this all before. He turned to leave but paused in the doorway, his voice quieter but firm. Think about what you really want, Linda. I'll do the same. With that, he went upstairs to the guest room shutting the door behind him. 
He lay awake most of the night, staring at the ceiling, his mind racing. The next morning, Linda was up early, leaving the house without so much as making coffee. Still fuming from Sam's harsh words, she pushed the thoughts of their crumbling marriage aside, throwing herself back into work. Sam, on the other hand, woke up late, feeling drained from the restless night. He sat at the kitchen table, head in his hands, regretting how quickly he had lashed out at Linda. He knew he'd been irritable for months, but he couldn't figure out why their once-loving relationship had devolved into constant bickering. Still, after the pleasant evening they'd had, Sam realized he wasn't ready to give up. He still loved her. Determined to patch things up, Sam decided to surprise Linda at work, hoping to take her out for lunch and talk things over. As he drove toward her office, optimism started to creep back in, but his plans were derailed when his tire blew out halfway there. Frustrated, Sam pulled into the parking lot of a small diner and called for roadside assistance. They told him it would take about an hour, so he decided to grab something to eat while he waited. As he stepped into the diner, he spotted Lee Stroud, a senior partner at Linda's law firm, sitting alone at a booth. Sam, what a surprise. Come sit with me, Lee called, waving him over. Sam smiled and took a seat. Nice to see you, Lee. What brings you here on a Saturday? Emily's out of town, visiting a friend, so I'm flying solo this weekend. Stopped by the office to pick up some files and thought I'd grab lunch, Lee explained casually. What about you? I was on my way to see if Linda wanted to grab lunch, but my car had other plans, Sam replied with a chuckle, though his frustration was clear. Well, don't worry. The project Linda and Mike are working on will be done soon. You'll get some time back once they wrap up in Chicago next week, Lee said with a reassuring smile. Sam froze mid-bite. Mike? He asked, his voice tight. Yeah, Mike Sanders, Lee answered without hesitation. He was transferred back to the main office about six months ago. I'm surprised Linda didn't mention him. They've been working closely on the Simmons project. Sam felt the blood drain from his face, his stomach twisting in knots. He forced a smile. I guess I haven't been paying much attention, he said, his voice strained. Sometimes it feels like Linda and I are living in two different worlds. Happens to the best of us, Lee laughed, unaware of the storm brewing inside Sam. It took every ounce of self-control for Sam to sit through the rest of the conversation, nodding and forcing small talk while his mind raced. When the roadside assistants finally arrived, he quickly excused himself and drove home in a daze. He couldn't even remember the drive when he pulled into the driveway. He stumbled into the house, feeling completely unmoored. His thoughts were a chaotic mess, swirling with suspicion, anger, and hurt. Linda had never mentioned Mike's return never said a word about working closely with him. Sam's heart pounded, and a dark thought settled over him like a cloud. Linda is having an affair. Sam fought against the idea, but it kept circling back in his mind, leaving him shaking and heartbroken. He poured himself a drink, staring at it for a moment, but then dumped it down the sink, refusing to fall into the same destructive habits that had consumed his father. Instead, Sam wandered into the bathroom and eyed Linda's Xanax bottle. For a brief second, he considered taking one but decided against it. A bitter smile played on his lips at the thought. Slowly, the initial shock started to wear off, though his thoughts remained chaotic. Mike Sanders is back, he realized. And she didn't tell me. The more he thought about it, the more it made sense. The growing distance in their marriage, the coldness, the arguments. It all seemed to align with Mike's return. Sam knew he couldn't stay married to a cheater. The word divorce loomed large in his mind, and he realized there was no turning back now. Counseling wouldn't help. It was too late for that. As his initial sorrow ebbed, it was replaced by an eerie calm. The tough kid who had survived the streets resurfaced. Sam wasn't going to be the victim here. But before he confronted Linda, he needed proof. He couldn't confront her with just his suspicions. He had to be sure. A grim smile tugged at his lips as he muttered, there's a price for betrayal, while dialing his phone, unaware that tears were silently streaming down his face. At the office, Stan Pierce called out to Linda as he gathered his things. I'm heading out. You guys almost done in there? Just a couple more hours, Linda replied. Mike's finishing up the first draft, and I'm wrapping up the rest. 
Don't forget your flight tomorrow evening. Get some rest before your meeting with Simmons on Monday, Stan said, offering a half-smile as he left. Linda sighed deeply, feeling the weight of the coming weekend press down on her. She knew this would cause another argument with Sam. Spending two nights out of town, even with Mike in separate rooms, seemed like a bad idea waiting to happen. Sam didn't even know Mike was back in town. Not telling him felt like a mistake now. I've done nothing wrong, and I intend to keep it that way, Linda reassured herself, though the knot of anxiety in her chest remained. Later that evening, Sam knocked on Kate's door, his face drawn and his eyes red. Come on in, Sam. You didn't sound like yourself on the phone. Can I get you a drink? Kate asked, concerned as she led him inside. No, thanks, Sam replied as he sank onto the couch, running a hand through his hair. I just needed someone to talk to. I'm sorry for dumping my problems on you. Kate gave him a soft smile. You're not dumping anything, Sam. You know I'm here for you. Sam took a deep breath before beginning to explain his suspicions about Linda. He laid it all out, the coldness, the fights, and now the knowledge that Mike was back. His voice grew tight as he confessed, It all makes sense now. The late nights, the distance. She's cheating on me, Kate. I can feel it. His voice cracked as he continued, I don't even remember the last time we kissed or made love. It's like we're strangers. Kate's heart ached for him. She had known Sam and Linda for years and found it hard to believe that Linda would cheat, but the pain in Sam's voice made it difficult to dismiss. Sam, maybe Linda didn't tell you about Mike because she knew how you'd react. That doesn't mean she's having an affair, Kate said gently, trying to calm him down. Sam shook his head, his expression hardening. I've thought about that, Kate, but it's too much of a coincidence. The timing, it all adds up. I didn't want to believe it, but I can't ignore the signs anymore. I need proof before I can do anything about it. Proof? Kate raised an eyebrow. What do you mean? Are you thinking of doing something drastic? Sam sighed, his voice low but resolute. I need to catch her in the act, Kate. If I'm going to end this marriage, I want to be sure. Can you help me? I need to follow them, see what's really going on. Kate couldn't help but laugh, despite the tension. Sam, you don't need some elaborate disguise. Just dress differently. Wear a hat, some glasses, and casual clothes. Trust me, that'll do the trick. Sam managed a weak smile. Thanks, Kate. I'll fly out after she does and find out for myself. As Sam left Kate's place, she stood in the doorway, watching him disappear into the night. Her heart felt heavy with concern for her friend, and for a fleeting moment, an odd thought crossed her mind. If Sam divorces Linda, he'll be single again. She quickly dismissed the thought, scolding herself for even considering it, but the idea lingered. Sam returned home late that night, emotionally drained after walking for miles, trying to clear his mind. He collapsed into bed without undressing, too tired to even think. Despite the turmoil inside him, he fell into a deep, dreamless sleep. The next morning was tense in the Miller household. Sam and Linda avoided each other entirely, exchanging only a few brief words. When the taxi arrived to take Linda to the airport, she left without a goodbye. Sam watched her drive away, feeling the weight of the decision he was about to make. He wondered if the trip was even necessary anymore, but he couldn't shake the feeling that he needed closure. He needed proof. The following day, a completely different-looking Sam checked into a hotel under a fake name. Wearing a Phillies cap, horn-rimmed glasses, and a casual jacket, he looked nothing like his usual self. Confident he wouldn't be recognized, he positioned himself in the hotel lobby, where he could keep an eye on the elevators. Before heading to his room, Sam noticed a flower shop tucked away in the corner of the lobby. On a whim, he ordered a dozen roses to be delivered to Linda's room. It was a small act of kindness, one that might raise her suspicion if she were up to something. He then settled into a chair in the lobby, waiting and watching, his heart pounding with anticipation. He fought against the idea, trying to dismiss it, but the suspicion kept creeping back, leaving Sam shaking and in agony. He poured himself a glass of whiskey, staring at it for a moment, but then dumped it in the sink. He refused to follow in his father's footsteps. After pacing the room, he went to the bathroom and considered taking one of Linda's anxiety pills, but quickly pushed the thought away with a bitter smile. 
The initial shock began to fade, replaced by a clearer, though still erratic, state of mind. So, Mike Sanders is back, he thought, and she didn't tell me. It explained so much. The coldness, the distance, the arguments. Sam knew he couldn't stay in a marriage built on deceit. The word divorce echoed in his mind. He realized now that counseling wouldn't help. It was far too late for that. As sorrow gave way to icy resolve, the side of Sam that had survived the toughest times of his life resurfaced. He wouldn't be a passive victim in this. But before taking any drastic steps, he needed proof. If Linda was truly betraying him, he had to be sure. A grim smile crossed his lips as he picked up the phone, tears unknowingly streaming down his face. At the office, Stan Pierce called out to Linda as he packed up for the night. I'm heading out, Linda. You guys almost finished? Just a couple more hours, Linda replied. Mike's wrapping up the final draft, and I'm finishing my part. Don't forget your flight tomorrow evening. Make sure you get some rest before meeting Simmons, Stan reminded her as he waved goodbye. Linda sighed, knowing how this would go down at home. Sam was already on edge, and spending the weekend out of town with Mike, even with separate rooms, felt like a disaster waiting to happen. She regretted not telling Sam about Mike's return, but she reassured herself, I've done nothing wrong, and I won't. This is purely professional. Still, anxiety gnawed at her. Meanwhile, Sam sat in the hotel lobby, his heart pounding. Around 4 p.m., he pretended to be engrossed in a newspaper, but his eyes constantly scanned the elevators. Hours dragged by. At 6.33 p.m., his heart nearly stopped when he saw Linda walk into the lobby with Mike Sanders beside her. Even after all these years, Sam recognized him instantly. Both looked tense, as if the day's negotiations hadn't gone smoothly. Mike tried to lead Linda toward the hotel dining room, but she pulled away, heading for the elevators with Mike trailing behind. After a quick, nervous meal in the hotel coffee shop, Sam returned to his spot in the lobby, pretending to read. The hours crawled by until, finally, just after 11 p.m., he headed back to his room, his mind racing. Maybe I'm overreacting, he thought. Their interactions had seemed professional, no affection, no signs of an affair. Still, doubt lingered. He knew he had to talk to Linda, calmly without letting it spiral into another argument. If they couldn't resolve this, their marriage might truly be over. The next morning, Sam woke up late, feeling exhausted. After a quick shower and a light breakfast, he reconsidered everything. Maybe I've jumped to conclusions, he thought, but something still didn't sit right. He decided to stay on his vigil for the next two nights, even though his confidence in finding anything had started to wane. That evening, back in his chair in the lobby, Sam watched the clock with growing tension. At 7.14 p.m., his worst fears were confirmed. Linda and Mike entered the lobby together, laughing. With Mike's arm draped around her shoulder, they looked entirely too comfortable, and Sam's chest tightened as they disappeared into the hotel dining room. Out of his view, Linda was elated. They had finally closed the deal with Simmons, and the success could lead to a huge promotion at the firm. Despite Mike's reputation, Linda felt grateful for his help in securing the deal. They celebrated over dinner and wine, and when Mike suggested they grab a drink in the hotel lounge afterward, Linda, in high spirits, agreed. She headed up to her room to change out of her work clothes before meeting him there. Sam, tense and suspicious, watched as Linda went up the elevators and Mike strolled into the lounge. Unable to sit still any longer, Sam decided to follow Mike ordering a drink at the far end of the bar where he could keep an eye on him. Through the mirrored backdrop, he observed Mike sitting alone in a corner booth, nursing a drink. The longer Sam watched, the more he began to doubt his fears. Maybe he had been wrong. Mike was just sitting there alone. No sneaking off, no suspicious behavior. Sam started mentally preparing an apology for Linda. But just as he was about to leave, his heart stopped. Linda walked into the lounge wearing a fitted black skirt and a white silk blouse, her signature string of pearls gleaming against her skin. The pearls Sam had given her for her 40th birthday. She walked a little unsteadily, clearly tipsy, and approached Mike, who stood to greet her, taking her hand as they slid into the booth together. Sam's stomach churned as he watched them through the mirror. He couldn't hear what they were saying, but the sight of them laughing, touching, 
was enough. Mike stroked Linda's arm, and Sam's blood boiled. This was what he had feared all along. His marriage was over, but Sam wasn't going to let it end quietly. As the drinks kept coming, Linda became more intoxicated. She didn't stop Mike when he kissed her. At first, she hesitated, trying to push him away, but it was half-hearted. Soon, she was pulling him closer, their kiss deepening. Sam's hands clenched as he watched, his rage boiling over. Suddenly, his voice cut through the lounge like ice. Mind if I join you? Both Linda and Mike froze. Linda gasped as she turned to see her husband sliding into the booth across from them. Mike fumbled with his jacket, trying to straighten himself, but Sam's eyes burned with cold fury. You move, Sam whispered venomously to Mike, and I'll rip your face off. Mike, remembering the last time he crossed paths with Sam, stayed seated, his face pale. Linda, now sober from the shock, sat trembling, horrified by the man sitting across from her. Tell me about my paranoia, Linda, Sam said coldly, his voice dripping with sarcasm. Tell me how I've been overreacting. He turned to Mike, who was squirming in his seat. I should thank you for pulling your hand away when I got here. I doubt Linda would have thought to do that. Tears welled up in Linda's eyes as she realized how far things had spiraled. This wasn't the Sam she knew. His coldness, his hatred. It was like staring at a stranger. Sam's voice, bitter with rage, continued. I should apologize for interrupting. I mean, you two were so engrossed. How long have you been screwing him, Linda? Was it worth it? His voice cracked, but his anger remained steady. Tell me how it felt to make a fool of me. Mike tried to interject, but Sam cut him off sharply. Get out of here before I make good on my promise. But remember, one day, I'll find you, and I'll deal with you. It might not be tomorrow or next week, but I'll find you. Mike didn't wait for another warning. He bolted out of the lounge, practically running. Sam chuckled darkly as he watched him leave before turning back to Linda, who sat paralyzed by shock. She had never heard such venom in Sam's voice before. He looked at her disheveled clothes, while rising in his throat as he wondered where it had all gone wrong. Had he been such a bad husband? Or had Linda simply grown tired of him? In that moment, Sam realized he didn't care about the reasons anymore. His thoughts were interrupted by Linda's tearful plea. Sam, please. I let things get out of hand. I was just so caught up in the excitement of closing the Simmons deal. Please, forgive me. I'm so sorry, Linda cried, her voice shaking with desperation. Sam stared at her coldly, his face emotionless. Shut up, Linda. I don't want to hear any more of your excuses, he muttered wearily. He reached into his pocket and pulled out a twisted piece of red lace. I gave these to you for your birthday, he said, his voice turning bitter. You said scarlet was your favorite color. You saved them for a special occasion, but it wasn't for me, was it? You wore them today for him. His voice hardened further. Stay here with Mike. Don't come home until I'm gone. I'm filing for divorce. Linda gasped, her face draining of color. We'll split everything, Sam continued, his tone icy. You can have the house. I'll take my clothes and my work. Don't fight me on this, Linda, or I'll make sure everyone knows about tonight, and I'll ruin your career and his. He pocketed the underwear and stood up, leaving Linda sobbing at the table, unable to respond. Three months later, Sam had moved out and filed for divorce, but Linda was contesting it. Despite his earlier threats, Sam found that he couldn't bring himself to drag her through the mud. He didn't want to deal with the public humiliation for either of them. His attorney, Woody Holmes, informed him that Linda wanted a private conversation before she would agree to the divorce. You should talk to her, Woody advised, leaning back in his chair. If you don't, this could get expensive. You're better off settling quickly. Sam stared out the window, simmering with frustration. Screw her, Woody. Let her fight it if she wants. I don't care. Woody sighed, trying to reason with him. Sam, this is going to cost you a fortune if you drag it out. Just talk to her, settle, and move on with your life. But Sam refused. No, Woody. I know exactly what she'll say. She'll either admit everything and beg for forgiveness, or she'll lie about it. I don't want to hear either. He paused then added, hold off on the divorce for now. I'm not in any rush. 
I'm not planning to remarry or anything. Woody sighed again. All right, Sam, but when you're ready, let me know. And hey, when this is all behind you, let's have dinner. It's been too long. Sam felt a pang of guilt for not reaching out sooner. He knew Woody was still grieving the loss of his wife. I'm sorry, Woody. I've been meaning to call. I'll reach out soon. He stood up and left the office. His shoulders slumped under the weight of everything. Back at his new townhouse, a rental he had been fixing up over the past few months, Sam tried to focus on his fresh start. The spacious, modern place was everything he thought he'd want, but it still felt hollow. He took some solace in the hot tub he had installed, spending long hours soaking away his stress and trying to quiet his racing thoughts. But no matter how hard he tried, thoughts of Linda and the wreckage of their marriage crept back in. Meanwhile, across town, Kate Adler was dealing with her own troubles. Damn it, Kate. It's not the end of the world. Tony shouted as he slammed the door behind him. It's just not working. Screw you, Tony. Kate yelled back. You're just scared of your own mother. Tears welled up in her eyes, but she turned away, refusing to let him see. Tony hesitated at the door, looking regretful, but he said nothing more as he quietly left. Kate collapsed onto the couch, a wry smile tugging at her lips. She hadn't truly loved Tony, but it still hurt. Why can't I keep a man? She wondered bitterly. What's wrong with me? She took a deep breath and headed to the bathroom letting the hot water from the shower wash away her tension. As she stepped out and reached for her robe, she caught sight of herself in the full-length mirror. Her tall, athletic frame, with flawless olive skin and dark, cropped hair, stared back at her. Kate grimaced. Crap! She muttered under her breath, irritated by her own reflection. She wrapped herself in her robe and flopped onto the bed, grabbing a novel in an attempt to distract herself. But after a few minutes of half-hearted reading, she tossed the book aside. Damn it, I need a drink, she said aloud. She made her way to the kitchen, poured herself a bourbon on the rocks, and sank into the living room chair. She stared at the ceiling, wondering where her life was headed. Stop feeling sorry for yourself, she muttered. You need company. You need to get out. Suddenly, an idea struck her. She picked up the phone and dialed Sam. It's Kate. Are you busy? I was thinking of coming over. After hearing his response, she smiled. Great. I'll see you in an hour. Maybe sooner. As darkness fell, Kate pulled into Sam's driveway. Before she could even ring the bell, Sam opened the door, greeting her with a smile. Perfect timing. The food just arrived. Come on in. Wow, Sam. You sure know how to treat a girl. I didn't realize how hungry I was until now, Kate replied stepping into the warm foyer. They sat down together and shared Chinese takeout, catching up and enjoying the easy companionship. After finishing the last of the wine, they moved to the living room. All right, enough of the small talk, Sam said with a grin. Let's get serious. He grabbed a bottle of scotch, poured them each a glass, and settled into a chair across from her. So, what's bothering you? Spill it. Kate laughed lightly and took a sip of her drink. This is good stuff, Sam. She hesitated before continuing. It's Tony. He broke up with me today. What's wrong with me? Why can't I hold on to a relationship? Sam leaned forward, his voice gentle but firm. Kate, the problem isn't you. It's the guys you choose. You're smart, beautiful, and strong. But you keep picking these idiots who don't deserve you. Kate was taken aback, her initial reaction one of anger. But as she thought about it, she realized Sam was right. Son of a, you're right, she muttered, shaking her head. Why haven't I seen it before? Sam smiled softly. You're not a loser, Kate. Maybe you just need to talk to someone who can help. Hell, maybe I should too, Sam said with a grin, locking eyes with Kate. They both burst into laughter. What a pair we are, Kate said, taking another sip of her drink. At least you had almost twenty great years with one woman. Realizing her mistake as she noticed Sam's eyes begin to well up, she quickly apologized. Nah, it's okay, Sam replied, his voice softening. Those were wonderful years, which makes this all the harder. When trust is gone, everything becomes suspect. He sighed deeply. Let's just get drunk together. They continued drinking, 
knowing it wouldn't fix anything but not caring. After a while, Kate, now a bit tipsy, slurred, Sam, you never let me use that spy out back. Let's do it now. Sam agreed, and with their arms linked, they stumbled toward the alcove where the hot tub waited. Oh, no swimsuits, Kate said, laughing. Screw it, let's skinny dip, Sam replied, and they both quickly undressed. They found themselves submerged in the warm, swirling water, and Sam couldn't help but notice Kate's beauty, while she uncharacteristically felt no shame in returning the compliment. You're not so bad yourself, Sam, she said with a playful smile. They sat side by side in the soothing jets of water. Despite the fog of whiskey clouding his mind, Sam knew he had to be careful not to cross any boundaries that might damage their friendship. But Kate was less hesitant. Should I make a move? Will he be upset? She thought, before deciding, oh, why not? She shifted closer to him. Sam tensed at her approach, but then quickly pulled back, splashing water on his face. Damn, I'm sorry, Kate. I just can't, he muttered, his voice trembling slightly. Kate, sensing his discomfort, helped him out of the spa and into a robe. She guided him to bed, where he collapsed and fell asleep almost instantly, like a child. Knowing she couldn't drive home, Kate settled into the second bedroom but struggled to sleep. She realized that even though Sam was separated from Linda, he wasn't truly available. Deep down, Kate knew she didn't love Sam as more than a friend, but her tears were for his pain. She understood how deeply he loved Linda and how her betrayal would haunt him. Meanwhile, Linda was also struggling. She had lost weight, looked pale, and was emotionally drained. Kate decided to visit Linda sensing she might need support. Kate, I messed up badly, Linda admitted when Kate arrived. But Sam is wrong. I never had an affair with Mike or anyone else. I just can't get him to believe me. He thinks I've been unfaithful for months, but I haven't. What he saw that night was the first time anything like that happened. Linda explained tearfully. I understand, Linda, Kate replied gently. But Sam is adamant. He won't talk to you or see you. I've never seen him like this. I've hurt him so badly, Linda whispered, her voice barely audible. I think he's too hurt to even face me, and I don't blame him. Trying to regain her composure, Linda asked, Kate, can you stay with me for a while? I really need your support. Of course, I'll stay, Kate agreed, though she wished she could do more to help. Linda looked at her watch and made a call. Woody, it's Linda. I've decided to give Sam what he wants no conditions. Yes, I'll see you tomorrow. Turning to Kate, she added, I'm going to give Sam the divorce. He deserves closure, and I can't keep fighting this. Are you sure? Kate asked, surprised. I know you both love each other. Maybe I can talk to Sam again. No, it's not fair to keep him in limbo. He's made it clear our marriage is over, and I have no one to blame but myself, Linda said, her voice wavering. But please stay with me. I really need you right now. Of course, I'll stay as long as you need, Kate reassured her, squeezing Linda's cold hands. Later, Sam was stunned when his attorney, Woody, informed him that Linda wasn't going to fight the divorce. She's not fighting it? Sam asked, confused. She never gives in easily. What's going on? Let her come in and see if she follows through with it, Woody replied. But I wouldn't hold my breath. Sam, feeling conflicted, wandered through his townhouse after hanging up. He should have felt satisfied, but instead, a nagging unease gnawed at him. What the hell is wrong with me? He muttered to himself. I'm getting what I wanted, right? So why this feeling? As he reached for a beer from the fridge, the phone rang. Hello? Oh, hi, Kate. What's up? Sam said, surprised. Forget it. Oh, sure. I'm eating Woody Holmes tonight, but you're welcome to join us. I'll pick you up around 6.30. And Kate, no more nagging. Okay? See you this evening. Bye. Later that evening, Sam and Kate walked into the restaurant where Woody was waiting. Distracted by thoughts of Linda and the impending divorce, Sam introduced his friends absent-mindedly. It wasn't until the awkward silence hit that he noticed Kate blushing and Woody holding her hand as if he never wanted to let go. Hey, hey. You too. Sam teased. You're like teenagers on a first date. So, I take it you like each other? 
Woody blushed and quickly released Kate's hand. Uh, sorry about that, he stammered. Kate, still blushing, laughed nervously and took a seat. Geez, Sam, you're embarrassing us, Kate said, laughing. Throughout dinner, they avoided the topic of Sam's divorce, agreeing to wait until Linda officially signed the papers before speculating. Instead, the focus shifted to Woody and Kate, leaving Sam as the third wheel. He didn't mind, though. In fact, he watched them with a bemused smile, realizing that this might be exactly what they both needed. Woody might finally find solace after his wife's death, and Kate might have found a decent guy after years of bad relationships. After dinner, Sam excused himself to the restroom. When he returned, he noticed the two were deep in conversation, with Woody looking particularly flustered. Uh, Sam, Woody stammered, clearly nervous. I hope this is okay, Woody said nervously. Oh, for pity's sake, Kate interrupted with a grin. Woody would like to drive me home. I'm sure you won't mind. Well, I don't know, Sam teased. I did pick you up after all, he warned, playfully narrowing his eyes. Kate laughed. Of course not, I don't mind, Sam said, smiling. The next day, Linda arrived at Woody's office, her face pale and drawn. It's nice to see you, even under these circumstances, Woody said, shaking her hand. Please have a seat. Thanks, Woody. Let's just get this over with. Linda replied, her voice heavy with exhaustion. I understand why Sam refuses to see or talk to me, she added, sitting down wearily. Woody noticed how tired she looked. I'm sorry, Linda. I tried to change his mind, but you know how stubborn he can be. Still, I'm glad you're not contesting the divorce. Linda nodded and signed the papers without a glance, surprising Woody. Aren't you going to read it first? He asked. What for? I trust you and I know Sam wouldn't screw me over. He's got more integrity than I do, she said softly. This must be tearing you apart, Woody said gently. Now that you've signed, I'll try talking to Sam again. He might be more open now. Whatever happens, I'll understand, Linda shrugged, her voice thick with sorrow. I ruined my marriage. I don't blame anyone but myself. I hope Sam and I can at least be friends. Tears welled in her eyes and she quickly excused herself before Woody could respond. After she left, Woody called Kate. Kate, Linda just left my office. She signed the divorce papers without even reading them. Can you talk to Sam? Maybe we can make him feel a bit guilty about refusing to talk to her. Yes, I know we're meddling, but it's for a good cause. Let's meet tonight at 7. Sam stood outside the home he once shared with Linda, feeling anxious and sweating despite the cool weather. He hesitated, wondering if meeting her was really the right decision. Kate's last conversation with him still gnawed at his thoughts. She had insisted that Linda wasn't making excuses, but that the situation was a mix of booze, success, and flattery from Mike. Nonsense, Sam had snapped. You're saying she let it happen just because she was near him? That's not what I meant, Kate had retorted. In the end, she convinced Sam to meet Linda, but he wasn't sure it would help anything. As Sam debated whether to just leave, the front door opened and Linda stood there, silhouetted by the light behind her. Please come in, she said softly, her voice carrying a hint of hope. Sam straightened up and forced a smile. Okay. Thanks, Linda, he muttered, stepping inside the house that had once been his home. Everything seemed unchanged, though there was a faint layer of dust, something that surprised him given how meticulous Linda usually was. He decided not to comment on it. Thank you for agreeing to see me, Linda said quietly. I appreciate it, and I promise I won't keep you long. Okay, Sam replied flatly without warmth. Woody and Kate convinced me to come. I don't really see how this will help, but since you're not contesting the divorce, I agreed to meet. Linda swallowed hard, knowing this would be the hardest conversation of her life. But she was determined to face it head on, to tell Sam the truth and admit her foolishness in hopes of some form of forgiveness. She needed to say it out loud to clear her conscience. Sam, please just listen. I need you to hear me, she began, her eyes pleading with desperation. Sam's gaze was cold and unyielding, but after a moment, he nodded and sat down stiffly. Okay, Linda, I'm listening, he said, his tone neutral. Linda took a deep breath. Sam, 
Believe me when I say I never slept with Mike or anyone else. I never intended to. I know what you saw that night makes it hard to believe, but it's the truth. Sam interrupted her, his voice cutting. The truth is rarely pure and never simple. Blushing, Linda pressed on. I can't fully explain my behavior that night. I've tortured myself over it, asking why I let it happen. The only reasons I can think of are the relief of finishing the contract and the alcohol I drank. But those aren't excuses. I was someone I'm ashamed of, she said, her voice breaking as tears streamed down her cheeks. Sam remained expressionless, though his emotions churned beneath the surface. Strangely, he believed her claim that she hadn't slept with Mike, but that realization only deepened his inner conflict. I was angry with you too, Sam, Linda confessed, her voice trembling. I felt like you weren't being supportive, but I know that's no excuse. I've replayed everything in my mind, and I see how stupid I was. But believe me, you can't hate me more than I hate myself. She wiped her tears, her voice small as she asked, Is there any way we can save our marriage? Counseling? Anything? Sam sighed deeply, feeling the weight of the situation. Linda, if I hadn't interrupted that night, can you honestly say you wouldn't have ended up in bed with him? That you wouldn't have been unfaithful? Linda gasped, her face paling as the truth sank in. She couldn't deny it. If Sam hadn't shown up, she might have crossed that line. The realization made her feel sick. You see, Linda, that's the issue, Sam said, his voice rising slightly before he forced himself to calm down. You betrayed our marriage when you let him kiss you, when you kissed him back, and when you let him undress and touch you. Things meant only for me, your husband. Linda finally grasped the full weight of what Sam was saying. She hadn't considered how deeply her actions had violated their relationship until now. The reality that she would have ended up in Mike's bed hit her like a tidal wave, bringing with it a flood of hopelessness and tears. Sam looked at her with a mixture of pity and sorrow. I feel sorry for you, Linda, and for myself. Maybe I share some of the blame. I could have been more supportive, but that doesn't excuse your behavior, he said, his voice softening. Now, I have to ask myself a question. Can I live with suspicion and doubt? Or is it better to live with the regret of a failed marriage? He paused, his voice filled with quiet resignation. I'm sorry, Linda. I can't live with suspicion. Regret is easier. Sam stood there, watching as Linda sobbed on the sofa. After a moment, he slowly turned and walked out into the night, leaving her behind.